All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the full bridge converter. And this is a sort of special topology because it's used widely in all types of applications, both DC to DC and DC to AC. And so the reason I say it's special is because we can use it the exact same topology, nothing really changes. All we change is the way that we switch this converter and we can use it in a couple of different applications. So in the case with DC to DC, that's what we're gonna look at here. Um, you might have drive, for instance, a DC to DC, uh, or you might use a DC to DC converter to drive a DC motor. And let's say a DC motor is modeled, or most any motors can be modeled with some modified version of something like this. And so you would apply a DC voltage uh, and then uh, therefore a DC current to the motor and you can um, run it according to whatever you want. But we're not going to consider any external circuit here. I mean, because what happened, whatever this thing is connected to is fairly irrelevant. What we're more concerned with is how we can use this um, as, as, a, as, a, as a sort of uh, building block for DC-DC conversion. Uh, what comes after it, whether it's a capacitor or an inductor or some series, you know, type of network, um, it's fairly irrelevant. Um, but what's more important is understanding how the switching states of this converter produce the type of behavior that we're looking for. So we've labeled the switches S1, 2, 3, 4 as follows, and this is a fairly standard way of um, sort of labeling them. And we have, I guess you can call this leg A, and then you can call this leg B, and fairly often this top thing would be called the upper arm, and then the bottom is called the lower arm. So you have these S1, 2 form a leg, but S1 is the upper arm. Okay, and we've also labeled a reference node here at the bottom, and so that's not necessarily ground, it's just a reference for the analysis here. And you'll notice in a lot of the other cases, we haven't really labeled a reference because we've had most of the time uh, the sort of lower rail was acting as a sort of uh, common uh, terminal for everything. But in this case, it, it's not necessarily obvious what the common terminal is. And so we've explicitly labeled it here. Sometimes you'll see the DC link split into two, so instead of having a plus like this, you'll have like a plus minus, and then a plus minus, and then they use this middle part as ground, and this would be like VDC over two, and this is VDC over two. It's technically the same thing, it's just a matter of how you prefer to do the analysis. So in this case, we're gonna look at it this way. And so if we jump into the analysis, we'll see that the voltage VA, which is essentially the voltage across switch two, is equal to, let's call it VDC, times D1, and D1 I'm gonna call the duty ratio of switch one, okay? And of course, you can't have switch one, S, so you can't have S1 and S2 on at the same time. If you did, you would short VDC. So as we had in the case of the buck boost, the boost and the buck converters, or the indirect and the direct converters more generally, you have a sort of complementary switching nature. And this is true for basically every power electronic converter. There's a certain there's a certain sort of complementary nature to the way you switch them. Otherwise, you, you run into issues like, for example, if S1 and S2 are both on, you short VDC, and then you, you would probably burn both your switches. Uh, the same is true S3, S4 can't be on at the same time. So what happens is when S1 is on, S2 is off, and then when S2 is on, S1 is off. Um, and now the, the lags relative to one another, that's where things can get a little more interesting because what you see is... Uh, there are different ways to switch these things and to produce different types of behavior based on these different switching techniques, but we'll look on that. We'll look into that a little bit more later on. Um, and so VA is VDC times uh, D1, and then we can say that VB is going to be VDC times D2, right? And so D2, I'm assuming, I guess, well, we can, maybe we can call it D3 rather than D2 because... D2 might suggest that it's S2, so let's call it D3, okay? So that's the duty cycle of S3, right? So whenever S3 is on, S4 has, or VB becomes uh, non-zero. And so if we look at this in terms of waveforms, well, before we go into the waveforms, it's not up to us, it's not, it's not a good idea usually to leave these generic. So there's some relationship between D1 and D3. And in one of the most standard cases, what we do is we switch uh, S1 and S4 to be on at the same time, while S2 and 3 are switched at the same time. So we, we switch them in pairs. So these two switch together, and then uh, maybe we use 
this blue, and these two switch together. So S1 and S4 switch together, S2 and S3 switch together. So they switch in these sort of diagonal pairs. And that's usually referred to as a bipolar switching strategy because of the waveforms that it produces. So if we have that, if we have that type of situation, and we sort of, let's say, we draw out some very simple waveforms corresponding to that, so we'll need three plots because we have VO and uh, VA and VB. So you have VA, VB, and then VO, and we'll call this thing here DT, let's say, okay? And so when VA, or let's say, let's say from zero to DT, uh, let's say from zero to DT, and then what do we have? Let's call this thing here uh, T. So from zero to DT, let's say S1 and four are on, okay? And so if we do that, if S1 and four are on, then VA would be uh, non-zero. It's not that it would be zero, it would be non-zero. Uh, so it would be positive, right? So if S1 is on, if this is connected to the top, then VDC is between these two points. This is what VA is, right? VA is basically the voltage across switch two. And so this goes to zero after when uh, the switch turns on. So maybe here we can write S1, four, and then here we can write S2, three, because we know that's when those two are on. So whichever switch is on is the one that I've written there. And so that means during this time, this has to be off. Otherwise you would end up with some issues. Uh, and those issues would be basically shorting the device. And so here you have something that looks like this. Now, we know just by looking at this, we know that VO is equal to VA minus VB. It's the difference of the two, right? So VA minus VB gives you VO, this whatever output voltage that we've called or that we're considering. And so we can take the difference of these two waveforms. So if this here is VDC, and this is also VDC, then VDC minus zero is VDC, and then zero minus VDC is minus VDC. And remember I called this bipolar switching, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. So you have a positive and then you have a negative. And the value uh, in both cases, they're basically plus minus VDC, and this is slightly off, but it doesn't look like it's symmetric, but it should be symmetric, that's just my lack of artistic skills. So it's between plus minus VDC is what we're saying here. Okay, so based on that, we see a sort of uh, behavior like this. And so you'll see that the average in this case is not zero. And the average is not zero is because these two are not symmetric. And by symmetric, I mean like the time that they're on for. So DT is less than uh, 0 0.5, or D is less than 0 0.5 in this case, obviously. This is three blocks, this is four. Right? So that means the average will be slightly below here. And we can prove that in a second. So let's, let's for now, let's uh, sort of uh, hypothesize that this is what uh, VO average is. It's somewhere below zero. And so we can prove this. Uh, and the way we're going to prove it is if we write the average of the output voltage, we don't need to consider any inductors or anything. We just want to know what's the average component. Well, I don't need to put both. I only need capital or I need, so let's put the capital letter. Uh, and so VO, what is the average? The time average that is. So the time average is the area of the top plus the area of the bottom, right? Over, divided by one period. So the area of the top is VDC times DT plus minus VDC times one minus D times T and that all divided by T. And so when you cancel that, you'll find that uh, or the T at least, you cancel that and you'll find uh, VO is equal to 2D minus 1 VDC. And so you can say that VO over VDC is 2D minus 1, basically. And so what happens in this case? So what happens in this case is why don't we, why don't we look at some, some cases here? So we say D, we'll say 2D minus 1, and then we'll say VO. Okay, so we're going to consider some um, ca cases, basically, right? So the case where d equals 1, 2d minus 1 is 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1, and vo ends up being vdc. Okay, now when d equals 0 0.5, okay, if this is 0 
2 times 0 0.5 is 1, minus 1 is 0. VO ends up being, no, it doesn't end up being V, it ends up being 0. And then when D is 0, this ends up being minus 1. This means minus VDC. So we see that we now have the capacity to make the output voltage anywhere between positive and negative VDC. And so that's why this is this is a this full bridge topology uh, offers sort of it, it can offer and we'll see that in later videos and later sort of topologies it can offer a, a very wide range a versatile range of operation because for a voltage for a given voltage current curve uh, or characteristic or when you consider the quadrants of operation as they usually do you can basically operate in all four regions you can have a positive voltage negative current, positive voltage, positive current, and so on. You can, you, can, you can have all the combinations of voltage and current given this type of topology. Um, and so this in itself is, the, so we see the output voltage is positive or negative depending on the value of D. Now going back to our average here, we kind of expected this would be below zero, right? And we can actually, I mean, if you think about this, this is D less than 0.5. Because if this is 7, 0 0.5 would be 3.5. And, and so because this is 3, this is less than 0 0.5. And we see that whenever D is less than 0 0.5, we expect it will be negative. So if you say D equals 0 0.1, right? So for instance, if this is 0 or 0 0.25 even, let's say, then 2 times 0 0.25 is 0 0.5. Minus 1 is minus 0 0.5. And so this ends up being minus VDC over 2. So whenever D is less than 0, you end up with a negative output voltage, average output voltage of this. And so that's exactly what we're seeing here. Again, this topology is very useful. It's very versatile. It's, uh, it's used in a number of different uh, types of converters that build on this topology. And uh, it's used in several different applications. So we will revisit this uh, multiple times throughout our study of power electronic converters. But this is a sort of very fundamental and introductory sort of idea of what the full bridge is and how it can be used as a DC-DC converter. And so again, if you had a situation like this, the output could be filtered by some LC and then connected to something else. It could be um, used to drive a motor, which it's usually used to drive, or it's usually used in applications where you need sort of bi-directional um, current capabilities. So current can be positive or negative and as well as voltage. Otherwise, there are simpler ways to achieve this type of function. You don't need four switches to do something like this. You can do something with, like, with, uh, you can use, like I say, let's say if you only need a positive voltage and a positive current, you can achieve that with like a half bridge topology, which is only two switches. So the full bridge is, it shines when you need positive and negative voltage and then positive and negative output current, let's call it I, O here. So yeah, we'll look at more detailed uh, or more elaborate um, sort of variations or more elaborate topologies that are based on this um, later on in our study. But for now, we'll leave it here with our study of the DC-DC full bridge converter. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.